All right, we just did a video on a critique of the Communist Manifesto. And I had told you in that video I wanted to go a little deeper into the nature of profits and any business transaction inside of a capitalist system. And so I don't know if you recall what I had said about that, but the, let me set the stage again and let's get into it. And I picked this, this, these points up from another scholar. I can't remember exactly who it was at the moment, but uh, I have to give you know, some credit that these aren't exactly my own thoughts, but I think the way that this was laid out is so clean and so effective, I wanna use the same structure, okay? So the question is, when a business makes a profit, like in the last video I did an example of if it takes, let's say $10,000 of raw materials, let's say, and labor to create a car, $10,000, all the costs of the rubber, the glass, the steel, the paint, etc., plus the labor, 10 grand, but they, the company sells the car for 30,000, there's a profit of 20 grand. The question is, is it unfair that the capitalist keeps the 20,000 and the worker only gets paid wages? Shouldn't it be that the worker gets some of the profit? And that's what Mark says, that the worker should get some of the profit. Why? Because, but for the worker's labor, there would be no car. And if there was no car, there would be no $30,000 sale price. And if there was no $30,000 sale price, there would be no $20,000 profit. So the profit is created by the worker, okay? It's obvious, the, the worker created the profit, yeah, except for one huge problem. And this is that Karl Marx does not give um, proper credence or a proper mention of all the invisible factors that created the possibility for the worker to do the work to create the profit, right? So Marx is really upset that the bourgeois or the capitalist class, the industrial class owns the mode of production. They own the factory, they own the business, they own the systems, they own the structures, okay? And so therefore the worker has to just work inside the structure and take the wages that they're offered and that's it and that's exploitation and that sucks and it's terrible. Yeah, but except for one problem. He doesn't really explain why the structure of the industry has value. He doesn't explain why the existence of the mode or means of production has value. He doesn't connect the dots that the, the existence of the means of production itself is partly why profit goes to the guy that owns the structure. And so I'll give you an example that I had heard that I think is uh, really easy to understand and it makes perfect sense, right? And so to explain why profit is not exploitation or a good argument for why it's not, not exploitation is to explain that the capitalist has to create the conditions inside of which the worker works, meaning they got to create the business. And so to create the business and to create an example, what I want to do is create a story, let's say, where... Uh, somebody says, look, let's create this beautiful hotel. It could be like the first Vegas hotel or something like who was going to have a job out in the middle of the desert, you know, back in, you know, the, what was it? The early mid part of the 20th century. There's nothing there except sand. You can't go there and get a job. There's nothing there. Somebody has to put a hotel there. So let's say somebody puts a hotel there, right? So they create, I don't know, the, the Flamingo Hilton or whatever hotel, all right? And let's say, let, let's make it a, a classier hotel. Maybe it's a Ritz Carlton or something where, you know, you go and, uh, not that there's anything wrong with the Flamingo, but, you know, you, 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 you drive out there and you valet park your car, or the, the, the valet takes your car. Okay, so the point is that the valet gets paid, let's say, and, and let me also frame this up by reminding you what were the three factors that the capitalists put into the equation. The worker comes to work with their uniform on and works their eight or 10 hour shift, let's say. But what did the capitalists put in when they built the hotel so people could drive up and park their car and the worker, the valet would have a job? Well, the capitalists created the idea of the hotel. They created the organization of the business and they took the risk that people would never come to the hotel and all their investment would never return anything and they would lose it and maybe wind up on the street, okay? So IOR, idea, organization, risk. And this is very important, why? Because here we are at the hotel, someone drives up and let's say the valet parks 100 cars that night. And let's say that the valet gets paid pretty well, all right? So let's get, say he gets 10 bucks, you know, per car, right? All right let, let's, make, let's do it this way, just for ease of reference. He gets $5 per car, and he parks 100 cars a night. So he gets paid 500 bucks a night, that's not bad. The only thing is the hotel is charging $25 per car, and so the hotel is making 
$2,000 a night on all the cars. Well, the workers only getting paid 500, the hotels getting paid 2,000. It, it doesn't seem fair. Like if, if the worker wasn't there parking the cars, then the hotel wouldn't have gotten the 20,000 because they weren't parking the car, the worker was parking the car, except for a huge problem that Marx doesn't address. And the huge problem is, but for the capitalist, the person who created the idea of the hotel and put it together, but for them saying, hmm, let's put a hotel out in the middle of the desert. Let's have an idea. Oh, what should it look like? What colors should it be? How many rooms should there be? What, what amount of, how much land should we use? How do we get the, you know, what planning do we have to go through? What zoning do we have to go through? Is there even planning or zoning in the beginning? Or, you know, what, how do we get infrastructure? How do we get the plumbing? Like, what does it look like? How does it work? It's the whole idea of the hotel is the first thing the capitalist puts in. The worker didn't come up with the idea. The worker got the job. The worker's important. But they just showed up for the job. They didn't come up with the idea for the hotel. Or if they did, they didn't implement it because that's this person, okay? That's the cap. That's the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur then also, after they have the idea, they have to organize the business. They have to set up a corporation. They have to get capital funding. They have to deploy the resources. They have to hire the staff. They have to manage the staff. They have to pay the staff. They have to do all that stuff. And at the whole time that they're organizing that, they've taken the risk of deploying their own capital or other people's capital with a promise to pay it back and a fiduciary duty to pay the investors back and, and, and deal with reputational loss if they blow it. Maybe they can never do business again or feel, you know, whatever, what they're going through. So they're taking a risk at putting this whole thing together. They're putting the effort in. What is about the managerial labor? Yeah, the labor to park the car. Yes. 10, eight hours, 10 hours, takes labor. What about the labor of the management and of organizing? What about the mental labor to come up with the idea? And what about the sort of, maybe it's even like, I don't know how to say what kind of labor risk is, but the, the energy it takes to take that risk. There's a lot of energy over here that's coming through the capitalists, the entrepreneurs, creation of the hotel, the mode of production. And that's valuable. And that is why that the entrepreneur, the capitalist gets the profit. They get the profit because they created the conditions, the container inside of which the profit arises. And it is true that but for the work of the worker, there wouldn't be the profit. But but for the, the actual idea, organization, and risk, there wouldn't be a hotel to park the cars at. And so that's the distinction that Marx, for whatever reason, doesn't fully compute in his analysis that profits are not exploitation of someone. They're a fair, I would hope, a fair and reasonable balance of the amount of energy, the amount of investment that went in. Yeah, this person's making an investment. They're showing up on time, they're working eight to 10 hours, and they're reliable. That's an investment, okay? But this other person's making quite a bit more of an investment with no guarantee. This person has a lot more of a guarantee than this person. And so that's, I think, my critique, which again, I think I pulled it from uh, other scholars, but I think it's pretty, uh, pretty viable critique. Now, I'm not saying that profits should be exorbitant. And so in your questions that I put together for your analysis of this video and your critique of this video, you know, I've asked you like, well, what is a fair and reasonable profit? Like, you know, maybe it shouldn't be that the CEOs are making 100 or 200 times what the average worker. Maybe that's too much. I, I'm not saying there's not some reasonable balance here, but I am saying that you can't simply assert that profits are fully based on exploitation because you haven't considered the amount of value that was put in from the entrepreneur side. That's the critique.